ahead and um, get started. So what we're going to do, uh, I'm just going to kind of go through the spiel one more time, is um, because teaching this way is really different for me, I'm so used to like having you guys in my space to where I can see you and get feedback from you. I do have the chat window open on my screen. So if you get lost or are not following what I'm doing when I'm sharing my screen, because you can't see my finger necessarily move across the screen, when it matters, I'll do my best to show you that. And, um, but if you get stuck or are lost, throw a signal up in the chat and I will do my best to kind of circle back around and go over it again. Um, we're going to be going over a couple of apps that are my favorite for basic edits on the phone, mobile edits. So these work for both iPhone and Android and um, a couple of fun apps for um, kind of giving your photos like painting effects or uh, making them look like kind of vintage photos. And then also I'll be going over um, at least one of my favorite apps, depending on how we're doing on time, for like repairing images and erasing things out of photos, which is some, a problem that a lot of us kind of come into. Uh, and that particular app, I think uh, there are two apps in the whole list of apps that I'm going to show you that that are not free. Um, and I'm showing them to you because they're, they're really good. So um, we'll do that. Um, I am just going to go ahead and share my screen. So I'm going to flip this over so I can see. Um, well, let me make sure that I have my chat window open. Where's my chat? Okay. I have the chat window open. It is right next to this on my screen. So if you guys get lost or... Um, don't are having a hard time following along. I'm going to try and do this slowly. And if you keep an eye on my um, my video, when there is um, something particular that needs to happen on the screen, I'll try and kind of show you both ways. Uh, and I'll be sure to make it clear that that's what I'm doing. All right. So we're going to get started in Snapseed. And Snapseed, as I was mentioning last week, is a, um, it's a Google app that was originally created by other people, uh, and it cost money when it was first kind of released. And then Google bought it and made it free, and they've continued to update it and add to it. And as far as free app, apps go for editing photos, Snapseed is one of the best, and it's got some unique features that really no other free apps, at least, have um, and it's got a lot of different things in one place that make it really worthwhile for editing your photos. So I'm going to show you that one first. Um, on my screen it is on the second row and it is the um, app farthest to the right so it looks like a little green leaf next to a, a white piece of paper. I don't know. This app and the reason why I start with this app so I can spend a little bit more time with it because it has so many things built in um, and the way that it was built, the app works differently and the user interface is different than all of the other um, editing apps that are out there. When you kind of figure out one app, most of them have consistently used a similar interface across different app developers so that it's easier for users to figure out how to use the app. Snapseed is one of those that decided to be different. So this one takes a little bit longer to get used to just because it's different from all of the others. So I'm going to kind of show you on my screen um, what I'm doing with my finger and you can kind of follow along too on the screen share with what's actually happening on the screen. So when I uh, edit my photos in Snapseed, there are a couple of different things to note. When you first open an image in Snapseed, it opens up and looks almost like an Instagram interface where you have filters that are these little thumbnails along the bottom of the screen. And you can tap through these to um, change the kind of base for what's going on. And there are some different filters and some really interesting filters that they've built into this app. 
but I am going to kind of go back to the, the normal no edit situation. And I am going to then, um, so underneath the thumbnails are a couple of words. There's looks, tools, and export. And if you tap on tools, it opens up this tool bin. And in this tool bin is where all the cool bonus stuff lives, like all the fun features and crazy weird things all live in this place. So I'm gonna start, I pretty much always start my edits with the tune image feature. So it's the, the top row, farthest to the left, I'm just gonna tap on that. And when I open it, it really doesn't look like it's done anything. Um, and this is where Snapseed is different. In order to access the um, editing sliders, the way to change and adjust the different editing parameters, you have to place your finger on the screen and swipe up and down to access the different editing features. So, um, I'm going to start with brightness and once you have that selected up here at the top it says brightness and there's kind of like a white bar above it if i then have my finger really on the image and swipe left to right that is what adjusts the brightness so if i swipe to the left it's going to darken and you can actually see that bar up the top of your phone go blue in one direction or another as it's increasing the brightness or decreasing I think this photo needs some brightness, so I'm just gonna add um, until it looks good. And this is arbitrary and, you know, plus 48 on my image is not gonna look the same as a plus 48 brightness on yours. So just do it to where it looks good for you. You can tap on the horizontal lines at the bottom to bring up the menu. Oh, can you? Very nice, Lena, thank you. Uh, so Lena just pointed out that on the bottom of the screen here, there is an X to close out of this. There's this little three lines kind of sliders icon. There's the magic wand, which is the auto edit icon and the check mark to accept the changes. If you tap on the, uh, the three lines, it does pull up the, um, the editing options so that you can click on whichever one. And when you click it, that menu does disappear and then you have to continue kind of swiping back and forth. Um, but when you're editing quickly, you can really easily change by swiping up to access the different options and then you know, swipe up again and keep going. Ooh, ambiance looks good. So that's kind of how I do it. I swipe up to the next option and then just kind of keep keep going and to see a before and after of what you've done in your edits you can push your so lay your finger over the photo and um, hold it there and as long as you're holding on to it it will show you the before of what you've done and when you let go it'll show you the after and then also this little icon in the top left hand corner of your screen that's got the kind of the solid half and the dotted half. If you click on that, that will show you the before and after of the tool that you're in. So as we kind of keep going using different tools, that that icon in the top will show you the specific before and after for that tool, right? So this is looking pretty good to me. It's definitely opened up the shadows and brightened everything up. My colors are a little poppier, so I'm happier with this. And I am going to click on the little checkbox in the bottom right hand corner to select these edits and apply these edits to the image. Now, this is where stuff is going to get fun. So I'm going to open my tools bin up again. And there is one tool in here that um, exists. I don't think it exists in the same way in another app that I've used. So this one is what makes Snapseed super special. And it is the selective edits little option. So it's the third row and it's the option farthest to the left. And it looks like a little, um, I don't know, bullseye or eyeball or whatever you wanna call it, um, two circles. 
a dot with a circle around it. And if you tap on that, what this tool does is it allows you to apply edits to a specific part of an image. And the app uses um, algorithms to kind of determine where stuff should go. And it's pretty smart. So we'll, I'll show you how it works. So basically what you do is you've got stuff on the bottom of the screen. So this, this white bar at the bottom of the screen, you have a plus and then you have an eyeball, right? So with the plus, so it'll be blue, the plus will be blue. You then tap somewhere on the image. And what I'm gonna do on my image is the shadow side on the right of my photo. I want that to be brighter and I wanna kind of brighten those shadows even more. So I'm gonna tap on an area that's in shadow over there on the wall. And do you see how it laid down this blue button with a B in it? That is my selective edit. And again, it's Snapseed, so it doesn't look like it's done that much. Um, but at the top of the screen, you see that little white bar has showed up again and it says brightness. So I can now swipe to the right to increase the brightness over that kind of button area and swipe to the left to decrease the brightness on that button area. And if you want to see what this is, what the selective section is actually working on, you take your fingers and you do this pinch and zoom motion. So if I put them here and then do this and go bigger, everything that's red is going to be affected by this um, selective app the selective edit. So I can expand and contract where this is affecting the image and my edit. And this allows you to do some really easy, cool stuff, like where you've got a, an image like this, where maybe half of it's in shadow and half of it's not, and you want to balance some things out. Um, it's good for uh, doing things with the sky or whatnot. Yeah, contrast is not something that I'm going to mess with really on this section. Same thing as before, and this is what I'm doing. I'm just swiping up and down to access the different options in this tool. So we've got brightness on the top, then contrast, then saturation, and then structure. And structure is one that we haven't really seen before. Structure is kind of like clarity or sharpening where if you have edges, it's going to kind of enhance the implied sharpness of those edges. Um, so for this, because this image is very textural, there are a lot of cool um, kind of the, the metal roofing and the walls and the windows, there are a lot of really interesting textures going on. So increasing the structure here will look good. Whereas if I'm dealing with a portrait, um, sometimes structure doesn't look as great because it will bring out like poor detail and hairs and all kinds of things that maybe we don't want to emphasize. So that's, um, that's pretty cool. When your button is active, you basically just swipe up and down. Don't actually touch the button itself, but just anywhere on the image, you kind of just move up and down and it'll let you access the different Features. Oh, I need to raise this up so you can actually see. So there's my, whoop, there's my button, right? And I'm putting my fit. Oh, now it's okay. So you just kind of put your finger near the. Oh, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. You kind of have to. It's a little bit of muscle memory and playing around. If you put your finger down and hold it in one place for just like a fraction of a second too long, it thinks you want to see the before and after situation. So you kind of have to put your finger and start that swiping up or down motion kind of immediately. And then it will, oh, and then it will do it. Now, because this is, this is what it is. Uh, you can move these things around obviously. So if you place it in kind of a wrong area, you can adjust where you put it. Um, and the way that you do that is you actually kind of put your finger on the button itself and, um, and 
once you put your finger on the button, you kind of immediately start moving it. And this is going to give you a little kind of target that shows up, this little magnifying glass target with this red in the middle. And if you put that red over, um, whatever that red is on top of is where that selective edit is going to start happening. So you can see if I start moving this around the photo into different places with the same, um, it's retaining the edit parameters that I put in before and it is just applying them to different sections. So if I put this over different places, it's going to do different stuff. That makes that makes that pool look like a bath of like Kool-Aid. That's really crazy. So I'm going to put that back over this kind of dark wall, which is what I want to brighten and then drop it. Now, if you for any reason decide that you do not want whatever you've done is wrong. You can um, kind of X out. So on the bottom pale bar on the bottom of the screen, on the left is an X and on the right is a check. If you click on the check, it's going to apply the changes. And if you click on the X, it's gonna cancel out and not do anything. Um, you can also gently tap on the button, like quick tap and then let go and it will give you these options where you can copy the button, you can copy the selective edit, you can delete it or you can reset it. And if you want to, you can add multiple buttons. So I can, uh, once this edit is done, I can actually do a new one. So I can grab, hit the plus button again on the bottom so that it activates. And I'm just going to lay this over the pool this time and ooh. and if I want to make sure that it's positioned properly, just make sure that, that red is over that blue. And what I'm going to do with this guy is I'm going to take that saturation down on the on the pool because maybe I don't want it to be like quite so electric. And I want to make sure that it's applying to the right area. Hmm. Didn't do quite what I expected it to. Okay. Oh, if I take the contrast down, that's not so bad. Or maybe I just decide that I don't like it and I can delete it. And then it just goes back to normal or before. Yeah. Now that I've gotten this selective edit kind of done, I know you're doing good. You're doing great. Um, I am going to... Um, I'm going to apply the, the change. So I'm gonna click on the checkbox at the bottom. And then I'm gonna open up my tools panel again because there's more stuffs. One of the other really cool things that exists in the tools panel here, aside from the selective edit option, which I think is probably the most amazing feature in this app of all time. Uh, is we have different filters as well as different um, kind of color toning things that we can apply. The first thing I'm going to mess with, though, is the perspective tool. So it is in the second row, and it is the third one over from the left. And this tool is really good for uh architecture, buildings, uh, interiors, things where you've got things that should look like a box, lines that should be straight, that sort of thing. Now, a lot of times when we're shooting buildings, we end up with an effect called keystoning, where things should be kind of straight up and down, and because we're standing and we're kind of like looking up at something, because of the way perspective works, things look wider at the bottom and then they kind of narrow to the top, right? So when we are dealing with photography, we can correct for that with these perspective adjustments. And this tool that we have in Snapseed is pretty good for that. And again, it works a little bit differently than some of the other apps that I've seen that deal with this. So we've got two icons on the screen right now. One is an up and down arrow and one is a left and right kind of double arrow. 
And if I start to pull up and down, I'm just, I just am putting my finger on the screen and dragging up and down, kind of the same as before. It is going to kind of tilt the photo um, up and down. And I think when I pull down, this starts to look a little bit more normal to me. And did you guys just see what just happened? I'm going to do it. I'm going to undo and I'm going to, I'm going to undo this so that you can see what just, see what just happened. Um, so I'm going to cancel out and I'm going to open it again. I'm going to go back to the perspective tool. Now, I'm going to drag down to kind of correct for the perspective. While I'm still holding my finger on the screen, do you see how I have two black kind of arrows on either side, like two black sections on either side of the corner on the bottom left and the bottom right? That is empty space that, because um, when you correct for perspective, it literally kind of tilts the photo and it, you normally have to crop down to um, kind of fill the frame, right? When I release my finger to apply this perspective correction, look at, look at those little black slivers. It fills in. Snapseed uses an algorithm like artificial intelligence to fill in the gaps. Sometimes it works, like in this particular image, and sometimes it does not. So be aware of that. You can either kind of crop down to fix for anything that it fills in incorrectly, but know that uh, you have that option. And you, if I, so I'm going to zoom into one of these corners, and to zoom into a photo, you do that pinch and zoom action with your, your finger. Oh. Trying to, are you not going to let me zoom here? No? No, it thinks that I still want to um, do this stuff. So I'm going to apply the change, click on the checkbox, and now I'm going to zoom in. So do you see in that bottom corner where it has doubled the, the four feet depth tile because it's using the information from that section to fill in the information that is not there, that doesn't exist? Uh, and you can also see on the bench where things don't quite line up from where it's filled in the gaps with artificial intelligence. Now, when the photo is zoomed out, you can't really tell. But when you're zoomed in, you're kind of looking for things. You can see some of these, these issues. For stuff like Instagram or just posting things online, it's not, it shouldn't be much of an issue. All right, so that is the perspective tool. Super cool, very into it. I am going to now open my tools panel again. And next to the selected brush on the third row, second one over, actually those two middle ones next to selective, we've got a brush and we have a healing. So these are some tools that allow you to paint in specific um, edits and also uh, a healing brush to either remove things or take out a zit or do kind of some small healing. So I'm just gonna access the brush tool really quickly and show you how that works. Because this one, this one's not my favorite selective kind of brush tool. There are other apps that do this a little bit better, but since Snapseed is free and it kind of has everything in it, I just wanna demo it for you really quickly to show you how it works and what happens here is you have got essentially four brushes along the bottom that you can choose from. You have a dodge and burn brush which brightens and darkens. So dodging lightens things and burning darkens things. It's the terminology that we used to use in a wet chemical dark room and it's just kind of stuck around for digital photography. Um, EV, so we also we have an exposure brush which is pretty much like dodge and burn, but the algorithm is slightly different. So sometimes your effect is a little bit different. So if one is working for you, 
stick with that one. And if it's not working, maybe try the other one and see if you get slightly better results. Temperature lets you paint in um, warmth or coolness into a specific area of the image. So if you're dealing with a photo that has bright sun in one area and maybe shadow in another, things in the shadows tend to be cooler and create some color balance differences. So you can use the brush to paint warmth into the shadow areas. And then you also have the um, saturation brush, which will let you desaturate different areas. So maybe this is the, the tool that I can use to give me a good result on uh, desaturating the pool section of this image. So I've got the saturation brush selected. Next to in the white bar on the bottom, do you see how it says saturation and saturation plus 10 kind of in the very center and it's got a down arrow to the left and an up arrow to the right? This is where you kind of adjust how your brush acts. So if I tap on the left arrow, it will get me to negative 10 saturation. Uh, if I tap on the, the right arrow, I can increase that to negative five saturation. I can tap one more time and it gives me an eraser, another, gives me a plus five. So you basically, it's not a very fine tool. It's kind of like big broad strokes and you can't really fine tune it very much. So if it works, great. If not, maybe move on. So I'm gonna just give it a go with the negative five. And I am just kind of, with my finger, going to start painting over and squiggling my finger. So I'm just basically kind of doing this jazz. And the, satur the saturation brush on this thing doesn't really desaturate like it should. It's, um, it's I don't know, I feel like, I feel like it's not, I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it's just my brain expecting it to not look that way. Um, but it, it definitely desaturated it, didn't it? So now we have a gray pool <laughs> and a blue building. It doesn't look much better, does it? So um, if I want to, I can erase that so I can actually switch my brush to an eraser and scribble back over it to erase that. And I can try maybe switching to the temperature brush. Maybe that's the issue for me, maybe it's too blue. So if I take the temperature down and add some yellow, some like warmth to it, maybe that'll fix it for me. Now, now it looks like a slimy pool and that doesn't help. So I'm gonna make that, I'm gonna erase that again. Maybe we try the Let's try the dodge and burn. So let's do, I think the negatives in this one are dodging and the plus are burning. So I'm just gonna do a negative five and test and see. No, that's definitely burning. That is a burn. That is not what I wanted. So we're gonna erase. And then we're gonna do a plus five. So dodge and burn tends to, so what it looks like it's doing to me is it's um, affecting the shadows the most. So anything that's kind of black, it's kind of lifting the black out and washing it out. And um, when it's burning, it's affecting the blacks first and kind of bringing the blacks and intensifying the blacks in an interesting way. So that's not too far off of what I wanted. So maybe now, maybe now if I take, the saturation, just a, just a little bit. Oop, okay. So I can do a before and after. So this is the before of straight out of the camera, straight off of my cell phone when I took the photo. And this is where I am now, as far as edits go. Um, so I feel pretty good about that. The only thing I think that it needs for now is some um, kind of, structure, like some clarity action. And in, there's a couple of ways to add that in this particular app. One of the things that you can do, and one of the tools that you can mess with is this tonal contrast. So this is the fourth row down. 
second tool over. And this one um, kind of adds clarity to different, allows you to add clarity to specific tonal areas of your image. So high tones deals with highlights. Um, if I can swipe, I swipe up and I can access the midtones, it'll add kind of clarity to the middle tones of an image. Low tones will add clarity to the shadow areas of an image. And then you've got protect highlights and protect shadows. And again, same thing as before, the way you access the, the different, the menu is with the button on the bottom, like Lena mentioned, or just swiping up and down. And then to change the, um, the effect, swiping left or right. Yeah. And then if I tap on the little button up here, it will show me the before of this tool and the after of just this tool. So you can see how much more detail this particular um, tool has brought out in the image. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna say yes and apply. So that is Snapseed and some of my favorite ways to kind of edit images in Snapseed. I use this app most often for the selective tool and also for um, doing some kind of contrast stuff and things like that in here. Um, if you want to get into filters and applying kind of looks to your image, you've got some different some different options. And these are the ones in your tool bin that are named things like vintage and drama and noir. Um, so if I click on vintage and the icon looks like a little lamp, I can then tap through different kind of filter options on the bottom and see kind of different vintage tonal um, things happen on my photo. And if I want to change, I can change the strength of these again by swiping up to access the strength kind of bar to apply just a little bit of that filter. And I can kind of change different aspects of this by adding more or less vignette. I can add more or less saturation. I don't think that needs any more saturation, brightness. So you can really kind of tweak and customize these. So that is before the little filter and that's after. So it kind of changes the look. It's really, it's really, you can fall into a deep, deep hole with Snapseed and I could do an entire class on just this one, but I feel like this is a good place for you guys to start. So I'm gonna show you um, another one really quickly. So I'm gonna click the check mark and apply that. And again, this is a before of where we started and this is the after. So really big kind of changes and I think it looks pretty cool. So now if you wanna save this to your camera roll where we've gotten our edits to, um, the export button on the bottom right hand uh, part of the screen opens up the, the options for saving your image. And in Snapseed you have options. So you can actually use the share button to share it to your different social media directly from the Snapseed app. You can save and you can save a copy and then you can um, do export. So save, if you are on iOS, so if you're on an iPhone, save will actually modify the original photo in your camera roll, but kind of like when you edit your photos on your camera roll with Apple, you can, open that photo back up into Snapseed and revert it back to the original still. So it keeps you from getting duplicate images in your camera roll. So the save option is a good option if you want to save space on your camera roll and save the edit into your camera roll. Save a copy preserves uh, is going to give you that duplicate. It's like a save as so you get the you still will have the original photo with no edits on your camera roll and then you will have a copy of it with the Snapseed edits. And then export, um, and the save a copy, I should say, you can also go back into Snapseed and re-edit that photo um, and kind of tweak your edits if you wanna go back to it. Export, exports a, a, a compressed JPEG with all of your edits that you cannot go back and export 
and you can't revert back to the original. So everything is kind of baked into that image file and you can't undo it. So those are your options for how to do that. Do you guys have questions about Snapseed? It's pretty cool. I'm a big fan. All right, so the next app I'm going to show you is, um, and I'm not going to spend too much time with it because I feel like there are some other things that I want to show you that are a little bit cooler. But the Lightroom mobile app for basic edits is really good and intuitive, and it is free. There are there are some bonus things that you can access if you are an Adobe Cloud subscriber. Um, so I I know so many possibilities. It's crazy. Um, so real quickly, I'm tapping on. I just tapped on Lightroom to open it up. If you follow me on Instagram, you recognize these photos because I have been editing pretty much all of my Instagram photos on Lightroom on my phone at home. Um, that's how much, like, that's just how convenient this is for me. Um, so one of the really cool things that I want to tell you about Lightroom CC and that I feel like it's a, a, a reason to have it on your phone is that you've got a camera that's built into this app that will allow you to shoot raw. Um, Apple keeps telling us that we'll be able to shoot raw with their native camera app, but they haven't unlocked that for us yet, which is really obnoxious. Maybe they're waiting for their next iOS or the next phone or whatever to do that. But down at the bottom of my screen, I have a blue kind of button, bottom right. On, one, on the right side, I have a camera icon and on the left side, I have a photo icon with a plus. This is how you bring things into Lightroom CC mobile, like Lightroom mobile. If I click on the camera icon, it is going to open up the camera. And if you want to shoot in RAW, you've got a little um, icon at the top middle of your screen that allows you to switch between shooting a D and G, which DNG stands for digital negative, and that is your universal raw file type. So it's capturing pretty much as much information off of your sensor as possible. And then you can obviously switch that to shoot in the JPEG. So if I'm shooting something that I think might end up on the website, or I've got maybe a big difference between shadow tones and highlight tones, um, and I want to have a little bit more information to edit that with, I'm going to try and shoot that in a DNG. Um, I'm going to close out of that. And then to import photos into here, you can just click on the plus next to that little camera, and it will let you pull in from your camera roll or um, from files. So I'm actually going to just come up here. If you follow me on Instagram, this is Willie Nelson. Um, this is the before. So straight off of my phone, and this is just the edit that I did. The way that this app works is we have a bar along the bottom that has all of our different doodads. The first four options that we have are your selective edits, cropping, and profile selection. And then if I swipe along, I get to light, which is, uh, allows us to change our exposure and contrast. Uh, deal with shadows and things. We have our color bar. We can deal with detail. Um, we have a perspective change as well here. And then you can also, another really cool thing about this one is you can create your own presets. So if you're batch ed editing, you can create a preset of your edits and it will, um, it'll allow you to do your edits faster. That's kind of why I've been editing on Lightroom Mobile for my Instagram feed because I can kind of copy and paste my settings really easily. So I'm going to just show you a quick edit where I am. So with this particular photo, Willie is kind of, Willie's a brown dog on a white bed. So I'm going to actually start this edit by taking the shadow slider up. And cause I don't want to brighten the whites too much cause they will, um, they will probably blow out a little bit. I'll take the blacks up. 
and take my contrast up just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit. And this is really, this is real time me editing. I just kind of pull stuff around until it looks good. I don't think I'm gonna mess with the color here. I'm definitely gonna come and mess under, oh, it's under effects, the effects tab. I can add texture, which looks really good with fur because it brings out all the fur texture and clarity. I'm gonna come back over here to lights and I'm gonna bring the highlights up just a little bit. This is before and that's after. Pretty, and once you kind of figure out one editing app, you kind of can figure out them all because they're all, except for Snapseed, they're all kind of slider based. Um, and I really just kind of get in and mess with the sliders. So that is, um, that's how I do that. And I'm just going to, I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna show you the selective editing here because this does have selective edit options. And this one, again, works a little bit different. So when I click on the selective edits option in Lightroom, it takes me to this screen. And in order to apply a selective edit, there is a plus sign in the top left. If I tap on this, it opens a blue bar, where then we have three options. We can choose from a brush, we can choose from a radial filter, and we can choose from a graduated filter. So say for example, I want to brighten Willie, but not brighten the rest of him. I can choose the, the radial filter and kind of draw a, um, an oval and kind of place that on him. Usually you can kind of like tilt it and rotate it, but it's not wanting to let me do that right now. But wherever is, whatever is red is gonna have, is gonna be affected. And once I have that positioned, then I can select light and um, pull the exposure up and it's gonna bring the exposure up for that section. You can take, you can mess with the contrast. You can mess with all of the different things just for that section. I can do it in a straight gradual filter or like horizons or something like that. Um, and then I can also take the brush and Oh, are you gonna let me brush? I think maybe I'm trying to do too many filters on one place and kind of brush over as well. Um, do you guys have questions? How are you doing? How are you feeling? I'm just waiting to get Heather. Um, Hi, Heather. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, do you use Snapseed more? And do you use one over the other, or do you use it both as an effect? Um, you know, it kind of it kind of depends. Lately, it has been um, I have been using Lightroom more. Um, Snapseed, Snapseed, I use when um, when I kind of want to do everything all in one place, if that makes sense. Like if sometimes um, for my edits, I will do a base edit in Lightroom and then apply a filter on it somewhere else for color toning because the Lightroom is really great for a base straight edit. You know what I mean? Kind of getting you a good base um, correction on something. And then if you want to add some zhuzh to it, some finesse, I will then kind of take it into a filter app, like one that I'm going to show you here in a second, to apply different like color toning filters and effects. Um, and then that'll give me my finished edit. Um, whereas if I kind of want to do all of that in one place, I will, I will go to Snapseed because Snapseed's kind of got everything all in one go. And um, if I do have an edit that has got kind of tricky, a tricky tonal area that I want to mess with, like dark brightening shadows and things, the selective edit feature in Snapseed, I think is better than the one in Lightroom. So um, I hope that answers your question. Yes, it did. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Um, okay, from here, I'm gonna show you some more kind of specialized things. Um, this next app I'm gonna show you is called Color Story and it is a filter, ad, like it's a filter app. I'm gonna open up Color Story. And this is an app where I kind of come to do finishing on things. Um, so this is just kind of a folder of different photos that I have set aside for doing editing demos. Um, so if I choose something like this, like this house in, and of course it's trying to sell me stuff, which don't do that. And one of the reasons why I recommend this color story app versus one of the other ones, which is um, its main competitor is called Visco. I'm sure you've all heard of it. It's, it's V-S-C-O and it stands for Visual Supply Company. And they kind of started doing, they were kind of the pioneers of this one um, or, or of this kind of style of app. Um, however, Visco has moved to a subscription only model, kind of like Adobe, where in order to use their stuff, you have to pay a monthly subscription. And I'm not a huge fan of that. Color Story still lets you, when you download their app for free, you have access to, I don't know, 10 filters for free. And then you can still buy individual packs of filters based on your visual style or whatever. And then you don't have to pay for a subscription because I think paying for a subscription for filters to edit photos on your phone is stupid. So that's my hot take on that. Um, so I recommend Color Story so that you don't have to pay a subscription and you can just pick and choose what edit or what filters you like and which ones to spend your money on because I don't know that's how I like to do it so here we are I have this photo open in um, color story and along the bottom I have the the filters button that shows me all the different filter packs that I um, have access to so if I if I let's see let's pick one that is kind of in intense. Um, so Candy Minimal is a filter pack that is kind of extreme. So some of these definitely do extreme kind of color changes and or um, color effects that are not, some of them are kind of eh, and I wouldn't do it, but some of them are not bad and I kind of like more than I thought that I would so there you go but you get along the bottom where it shows you your little filters in the pack it gives you a preview of what it's going to look like and I'm just kind of tapping through to have it show up on the main image and so for something like this that's very extreme when you click on it underneath there's a bar and I can increase or decrease the level of that effect um, so let's say I want this one to be a little less, you know, a little less dreamsicle than what the full, full dreamsicle is. So maybe we'll go like 50%. And then I can click on the check mark and it will apply that. The other cool thing about Color Story over Visco is you can layer the different filters where you can't do that in the other app. Um, and I can kind of add them on top of each other to get a really interesting effect. So that's the that's the before and that's the after. So I can really I can really kind of play with how how this looks um, versus how it started out, which is kind of fun. Now in this app I can also do adjustments. So once I've applied kind of a filter and this is this is how I tend to work in this app is I tend to do the filters first, and then if I need to tweak it any further, I'll go to the adjust tab. And then this is where I can um, add brightness to a photo or tweak the saturation um, if I want. I can tweak the temperature so I can make it cooler or warmer. And I'm just, I'm editing this maybe a little bit more extreme than I would, um, for me personally, just to kind of show you how it works. Um, but this one, this one makes, this one, this app, I really love this app for, for doing kind of color toning and applying effects to your images because you can 
layer them and you can do all kinds of cool stuff. And um, I'm just, I, I tend to get really good results. And no matter what your style is, they have a pack of filters for you. So if you like kind of dark or moody, they have a pack of filters that will suit you. If you like bright and colorful, they will do those too. Um, and then if you just like things to look maybe a little bit more vintage, there's a pack in there that will suit you guys as well. And they keep building out different features. So now they have a touch option where you can kind of paint in an effect in a specific place. Um, and of course, they also have a subscription model. And I think that there are some tools within this app that you can only access as a subscriber. I don't subscribe because we already soapboxed that a second ago. Um, but pretty much everything else I can do in here. So this is kind of how I add a little extra zhuzh to some photos um, is using this app, A Color Story. And it is one of my favorites. Um, so you can, when you're done with the edits, um, if you're an Instagrammer, you can save in grid. So you can actually save this and show it on your Instagram grid to see if it will fit with your aesthetic. Or you can just save it and it will save a copy to your, your camera roll. Um, so that is the quick and dirty color story, which I like. And then if you um, are into even more vintagey vibes. Hipstamatic is a really interesting, ooh, I have this still set to the selfie mode and I'm gonna turn that off. Um, Hipstamatic is a, one of the first ever photo editing apps slash camera apps that came out for the iPhone back in the, back in the OG days. Um, and it is still around and they have still been updating it and they've still been doing cool stuff with it. And basically how this works is it's all based on vintage looks. So what happens is when you go to take a picture, you select, you kind of pre-select, um, let me turn this this way. You kind of pre-select how you, the, the film stock that you wanna use and the camera that you wanna use. And when I push the shutter and it takes a picture, it will, um, it'll apply that filter to your photo when you take it. And then you can kind of go in and adjust it in post or upload a photo and kind of edit it. But this is more of a, um, if you just like the surprise, it's almost like taking a Polaroid. You never kind of know what you're gonna get when you push the button. So you can choose different filters to apply to your camera. Um, as you're shooting. So if I'm here, I can click on the little filter icon and select a different, let, let's, do, let's do this one, see what happens with this one. So I select a different kind of camera option, hit the shutter and it saves. And now I have this versus this. So this one acts totally different um, and it is pretty cool. So that is uh, Hipstamatic. There are two apps that I kind of want to show you before I go. Um, one of them is called Touch Retouch. It is, it is a paid app, but it is the one that will erase all kinds of stuffs from your photos and it is worth every penny. Um, and then the other one is oil list, which will turn your photos into paintings if you're into that. Um, so I'm going to start with touch retouch. And I believe this one is, it's either $2.99 or $3.99. I can't remember, but it is, um, it's kind of amazing. And, uh, I am... I'm always impressed with how well it works. So what can we, what can we demo this on? I have, okay, so I'm gonna choose this photo. So this photo is um, just a set photo of when I was working the other day. And let's say there are a lot of chords and weird things in here. So, um, I'm going to zoom in 
to this here and I'm going to erase that camera strap. Um, so I just, what I did is it's got different um, types of erasers along the bottom. I have an object removal, I have a quick repair, I have a line removal, which is really great for things like signs or things that are perfectly straight. Um, and then I have a clone stamp. I'm just gonna choose object removal and I'm gonna choose the brush option and I'm just gonna paint over this strap and let go and click on the go button and voila. And then of course I can zoom in here and get this last. Click the go button. Ta-da. It's really kind of magical. It really is. Uh, also works on zits and power lines and signs. And um, yeah, it does. It heals at the same time. It's freaking amazing. It's the coolest. It's the coolest. Um, it's the coolest thing. So I can like, I, ooh, nope. Don't want to do that. Undo. I can come in here and I can do, let's do the quick repair. So I'm gonna do the quick repair tool. I'm just gonna see if it'll get rid of that. Not bad. Oh, no, doesn't like that one. So maybe we will go back over here to object removal. Go. No. Okay, so here, here's where it doesn't always work the way that we want it to. Sometimes you have to get your brush, like keep your brush away from places that it doesn't need to be. That's much better. Yeah. It's really, it's a super handy tool and I feel like it's worth, it's worth every dollar. It's not a subscription. You just have to pay for it the one time. And um, you can see a little before and after. It does a great job on blemishes. Um, you know, it is, it is an app that does one specific thing, but it does that one specific thing real well. So there's that. I'm a big fan. I like that one a lot. I, I held off on buying it for a really long time, and then I saw somebody else demo it, and I was like, I've got to have that. It saves my life. You don't need it every time, but when you do, it's a lifesaver. All right, last one, I promise. And this one is um, Oilist. So Oilist lets you take a photo, and I'm gonna choose this. Um, and so what it does is when you bring a photo in, it lets you kind of choose, it basically builds the painting as you kind of go, and you can change as you go the mood, and it will continue to kind of adjust, it just keeps painting, and you just kind of mess with the tweaks for whatever it does, and it just kind of, so I'm just clicking on these different things and choosing these different, messing with these sliders, and um, it's going to keep doing stuff and keep painting and keep layering constantly, and you basically just kind of let it run and you push, you can push your finger over the, the kind of painting as it's painting itself to pause. And then you can um, kind of save it when it gets to a place that you like. And you can kind of keep saving versions. So this little icon, that's that underneath the, the arrow, like right here, this little icon right here. I know it's crazy. Every time you push that little, that little glowing plus inside of the, the, the frame, it takes a photo of the progress of that painting. So you can, like, if I like this, I can say, okay, great. I like this, but I'm going to come in here and have it do like larger brush strokes. And I'm going to come in and have it, um, add, I'm going to add some chaos to this. 
as it's painting. Ooh, no, I want less chaos. And maybe, maybe no chaos. And I don't want it to reset itself and kind of start and normalize again. I can have it, like I can really change the quality of the brush strokes. I can just, I just basically like, it's one of those ones that's kind of fun to just kind of sit and stare at it like a fish tank, like as it's going. And you just kind of push that little plus button and it will just kind of keep saving the painting as you go. Um, it's really, it's really interesting how it works. And um, there are endless possibilities. So it just kind of, it just, it literally just kind of keeps going. It's, it's crazy. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been messing with this app a lot over quarantine, just kind of watching it go literally like a fish tank. Um, so it's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. And then when you want to check your paintings to save them or print them or do whatever, you just check your little, your little bin with your, your paintings. Uh, have I printed an image from Oilist? Um, I have not printed anything big from Oilist, but I have printed like a small, like postcard size from it. And on kind of your standard not glossy paper it looks really good like it's it's high quality um so you can yeah you can really and you can it actually in the app is attached to a um place that does canvas prints so you can order canvas prints of your art directly from the app which is kind of cool um how about incorporating an image into a book yeah you would just um choose one so let's say that I really, really like this guy and I want to save it. I can um, click on the more option, I think, and it will let me save this image to my camera roll. And then I would just send it to, um, and then I, it would save it as a, a, an image file and then I can drag and drop that image file into a book. Yeah, you can definitely do that for sure. Okay, that was a lot, y'all. How are you feeling? How are you doing? Was that helpful? Was that useful for you guys? Oh, good. I'm glad, Lena. Yay. Perfect. All right, I'm going to stop the share of my screen. And um, that is the basic version of how I edit my photos on my phone and literally um the apps that I showed you today so Snapseed, Lightroom, Color Story, and Touch Retouch those four are the ones that I use I would say 80 maybe 90 percent of the images that I either post or that come from mobile I edit in in either one or all of those um so they're my favorites and for good reason and i think they're worth it so um if you guys have any additional questions about uh editing on mobile or any other adapt like apps you want to see or specific kind of tutorials uh, let me know and if you have any questions about any of the apps that i went over feel free to email me or let me know and i will i'll see you guys soon hopefully when all of this ends. I miss you all so much. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.